Hello everyone, welcome to Breaking the Huddle, and uh, again, so honored to be with you, and uh, as we're going to close out this series, I think, on God's supplements, uh, it's been very rich, uh, thanks to you guys that have responded, it's a blessing uh, that you have made statements and how it's blessed you, and uh, I, I don't care who you are, you enjoy being fed back, compliments. Uh, and I thank you for that. It means a lot to me. And uh, because the last thing I want to do is waste anybody's time. And I'm a pretty busy person. And I don't really need to be doing this if it's not making a difference. So trust me, your feedback makes a big difference for me. It helps fuel me to keep doing this. Amen? And so anyway, you know, Easter is this coming Sunday, Good Friday, of course. And what, I couldn't have timed it any greater uh, that we're ending this series with God's supplements. And of course, we're, we're talking about love. We're adding to our faith virtue, moral excellence. We're adding to our faith knowledge. We're adding to our faith self-control, endurance, perseverance. Uh, we're adding to our faith godliness, brotherly kindness. And now we close out this series with the greatest of all, and that is love. Amen. And uh, the fact that uh, what does Easter mean? Easter means it's the ultimate act of love. Christ gave up his life for our life. Praise the Lord. And the good news is because of Easter, the story there really just begins. Amen. Jesus is the only person that's ever rose and ever will from the grave. Amen. First John chapter four, verse eight says this. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Verse 16, it says, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Can it not get any more clear than that? Colossians chapter 3, verse 14 says this, above all, say it again, above all. I'll say it one more time above all, says, close yourselves with love, which is the glue to perfect harmony. I might have added a word there into this scripture, which is the perfect glue for harmony for life. Verse 15 says, and Colossians 3, 14, verse 15 says, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in our heart. Everybody's searching for peace. But I know that you know this. Until you meet the Prince of Peace, you will never, ever, ever have true peace. You know, sadly, we go through circumstances in our life. Many of those you would think not in a million years. That happened to me here just a few years ago. And uh, the deal is all I could scream out on the inside of me is all I want for the rest of my life is peace. That's what I want. Because if we don't really have peace, we infect in the wrong way everything about us and everything around us. And to God be the glory. I truly believe more than any time in my life I had that true peace of God far from satisfied yet, I hunger for more and more peace that only comes from a true relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why this lesson here couldn't have been more perfect timing with Easter just in front of us. He died on the cross because of our sins. I tell inmates all the time, now, the state knows you by a number, but Jesus knows you by your name. 
Amen. I'll never forget. Well, in, in 1 John 5, 12 says this. He who has the Son has the life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. I don't know how many times I've shared that in prison. And I share it as my multiple choice question. A. He who has the Son has the love of Christ in them. God is in them, and they are in God. He who has the Son has the life. B, but he who does not have the Son of God has not accepted him. They have rejected them. They do not have the life. Even though they're breathing air that we've never seen, never will see, but though they're alive, they're dead because they have never stopped to receive this love that Easter gave them by Jesus going to the cross to die for them. So many times, I remember a long time ago, out in the middle of a prison yard, I stood up in the middle of a boxing arena and Every side of that arena, there were inmates shadow boxing, playing handball, doing whatever. And I honestly thought not one single inmate was listening to me. I didn't have a sound system. Uh, and I cut my voice and started doing the best I could to share Christ. And I got to the end of it. And I mean, they're all, it was like a competition. You're here, you're talking this Jesus stuff, and we're going to keep doing our thing. We don't want to hear that Jesus stuff. But you see, I kept on, to God be the glory, and I closed out what I just shared. I'm going to end this with a multiple choice test. A, he who has a son, I got my hands cupped over my mouth. You know, hundreds of inmates all around me. A, he who has a son has the life. You've asked Jesus Christ. Are you willing to ask Jesus Christ into your heart when I share how this prayer in just a moment? Or B, he who does not have the son of God, you reject the son of God. You're more into your personal image of flesh does not have the life. And so I prayed a sinner's prayer. And all of you that you prayed that in your heart, you now have A, the Son of God, in your heart, the greatest love of ever. Amen? I got through, and you know, not one inmate, Stopped what they were doing. I pray day in my life. I pray day in my life. And I walked down. I got down out of the arena. And I started walking out of the prison. And just about the time I got to the front gate, I hear this voice yelling, Mike, thank you. I have A in my heart now. And I mean, I lit up. Now, would have I enjoyed many more? Absolutely. But you see, God's word says, if just one comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, all of heaven rejoices. I get asked the question all the time, Mike, is it really all that money you spend? You say, is it it's worth that one? I always have the same answer every time. I get that question maybe twice a year, something like that. I always tell the person that said that, well, let me ask you this. God forbid, if that one person in prison that prayed that was your child, would it not be worth it? I get the exact same answer basically every time. Well, I hadn't thought about it like that. I said, well, maybe you will from here on out. Yes, people, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. Maybe the most quoted verse of scripture in all the world. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him 
shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, folks, what a great time of the year, Easter, because it is a true example of what love is all about. It's never about me. It's always about those that are around me, our family, our loved ones. Amen? And so I challenge you to let go and truly receive this love that God is talking about. For God so loved the world that he gave. And the good news is he's still giving today. He gives and he gives and he gives and that giving never, ever, ever runs out. You know, what is it? First Corinthians chapter 13. That's the love. Let me turn there just real quick if you'll pardon me here for just a minute as we close out this section real quick. In John chapter 13. Amen. Let me do this here. Verse 13, none want one of the other greatest scriptures in the whole Bible that's read. It says this, and now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So repeat after me. When I say man, if you're a lady, you say woman. In Jesus' name, I am a man of virtue, moral excellence. In Jesus' name, I am a man of knowledge. In Jesus' name, I am a man of self-control. In Jesus' name, I am a man of perseverance, endurance. In Jesus' name, I am a godly man. I am. I am. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It's what God thinks. In Jesus' name. I am full of brotherly kindness. I care for the people that are around me. And in Jesus' name, I am that man of love. I have faith in me. I have hope in me. I have love in me, which is the greatest gift of all, above all the others, the gift of love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. To God be the glory, I'm going to come back with one more part to this lesson next week. I don't want to add it on here. I want to stop with that because I want to literally read the scripture to you. When we supplement, God supplements all these that we have just quoted and made a statement into our lives, I want to share with you the following verse of scripture that takes place in our life because he's no respecter of person, place, or thing. Amen. Hey, it's been a great series. I'm going to close it out next week. I promise you, the Mike Barber Ministries, we love you, we love you, we love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The best is yet to come in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for this amazing love in the name of Jesus. Hey, go to our website, mikebarber.org. Thanks to all of you that click to your friends, your family, talking about our ministry here. Thank you for your gifts, your prayers. Uh, I can't say enough about those gifts. And I'll see you next week as we live out these God supplements in our life. Love you. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Breaking the huddle.